Hey guys, Stephen and Don and Daniel here with ProTech. Today we're going to talk about this man's amazing accomplishment of obtaining Grand Master in all 13 divisions, 13 gun divisions in Steel Challenge in first SCSA. In the world, first, the first person in the world out of 60 plus thousand shooters who compete in Steel Challenge. I don't know what the, what the total is now, but it's up there. In the world to obtain Grandmaster ranking in all 13 gun divisions. And we've got him here in the shop today. We're one of his many sponsors. Um, and we're just going to ask him some questions about his journey and uh, promote him because he's ready, he's ready to go to the next level. Okay? All right, so let's begin. Sure, buddy. Go ahead. I'll come back. Okay, Max. Thank you. We're a family environment here, so we've got our kids. He's, he's got his son here running around, and Maddie and Max are running around. So, All right. So, Daniel, how many years... How many years have you been shooting? Well, Don, you can answer that one. What was it? August, August 2017. August 2017. There we go. Yeah, awesome. That was the man, my first shots. <laughs> wow. August 2017. Yeah. Four years. That's awesome. Yeah. And what got you into shooting? Um, I had just moved to the U.S. Uh, there was this big uh, gun shop next to, next to where I was living. And um, I'm uh, originally a skydiver, or at least when I was when I moved here. And uh, just some weekends where the weather wasn't nice and, you know, it was about to get colder. And uh, that shop was always there and I was curious, you know, hey, I want to give this thing a try, see how it feels. So I reached out to ProTech and uh, somehow ran into Don, which was a blessing. And uh, it, it kind of <clears throat> went from there. Amen. That's awesome, brother. Um, so you kind of already answered this one, uh, but you can elaborate a little bit. Uh, sounds like you started shooting here at ProTech, yes. right? Yes. I was going to say, where, where did you start shooting and who became your mentors along the way? Oh, so many people. Uh, or your, main, mean, your main ones, Omar. I mean, for sure, Omar is a big part of it, right? Um, that means old man at the ring. Yes, <laughs> yes. So yeah, I mean, um, uh, Don was uh, was there, a big mentor, uh, way before I ever considered competing. It was just for fun, just uh, a personal challenge to you know control the gun and, and, and learn how to shoot. And Don, you was had good always... natural ability too. Well, I had a good teacher, <clears throat> and uh, I think Don put put the foundations where they needed to be. You know, the, the, the exact. Yeah, you, can, you can't build a house without the good foundation. So I think Don started Sweet. me off with the right techniques and, and uh, just the right mindset and the right approach to, to the whole, let's say, shooting sports. Mm -hmm. And uh, then my competitive side took a little bit over. <laughs> and <laughs> yes. kind of, things awesome. kind of escalated yeah. from there. Daniel's one of the top skydivers around the world also. That's where the competitiveness is also shown. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, for sure. <laughs> awesome. Um, you mentioned on your Facebook post a couple of other people too who have mentored you along the way, but I can't recall their names. Uh, yes, um, uh, the guys at Wabash Valley Armory. Uh, so uh, quickly after I, I got into the sport and, and just looking for guns and trying to understand how it worked, ran into this shop in, in, in Terre Haute, Wabash Valley Armory. And uh, they just, from the moment I walked through the door, they just reached a, a friendly hand. And uh, I ended up being a place that I just spent some afternoons after work, just go in there and talk to those guys. And they actually invited me for the first match. It was a three gun match. And that's where I met also Sharon, which I put on the post. And uh, those are the people who kind of coached me into competitive shooting. And then I kind of went a little bit of three gun, a couple matches, a couple of IDPA matches, a couple of steel matches, and then the USPSA came along, and things kind of went from there into USPSA, and then eventually I kind of settled on steel challenges as the last couple of years. Don't forget bowling pins. Oh, bowling pins, yes. And, bowl, and bowling pin tips. tips. 
Yes. And uh, the Friday night steel matches we used to have back in the day on the plate plate tables, you oh, shot a lot of those. I already considered those yeah. steel challenges. <laughs> yeah, steel, steel they, shooting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they went into steel really quick. So, yeah, for That's sure. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> now, when when specifically did you start shooting steel challenge? I uh, looked that up the other day. I think my first match in steel was November 18. So November of 2018. Yeah. So 2019, 2020, 2021. We're at almost three years. So in less than <clears throat> three years, you achieved this. Right, this isn't something. The grand match. And Steel Challenge has been around for how many years? I'm not so sure. Approaching 30. I think so. Yeah. Probably. In the 90s somewhere. Or so, early 90s, well, I know so. USPSA is old, but Older Steel Challenge. Man. I mean, Steel I Challenge Steel used to Challenge. be its own event in California, yeah. and uh, USPSA bought the rights to it a few years ago. Yeah. But I don't know how how, how long they they were going. Somebody, we'll, we'll put it in the comment or in the description of the video how old Steel Challenge is. But I don't think Steel Challenge itself, the way we know it today, is much older than a decade or two at the most. Okay. Uh, but it, it it has really taken off since USPSA purchased it. That's when it really got marketed, and USPSA shooters started to shoot it for a lot. Sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, okay, so three years. In three years, he accomplished this. It's amazing. Um, what did you do to get your first Grandmaster ranking? Ooh, that was a uh, Rimfire Rifle. Uh, optics, so RF, RFRO. Uh, I think that was, I think that was a year in to shooting. It was a year into shooting. I, um, it was the end of that that first, let's say, official season. Uh, I remember. I, I'm pretty sure it was accelerator the stage where I, I finally made it that day. And uh, I remember I was super nervous. I was shaking. Well, I was still shaking on the last gun now, but. Uh, different reasons, uh, but yeah, I think uh, I just uh, I just stick to it. I mean, it was just a fun thing and shooting bowling pins and kind of cross training with the rifle and bowling uh, uh, pins and shooting here at Steel Challenge. Um, so I think that's uh, that's pretty much what it did. It was just sticking to it. <laughs> practice, 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 practice. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. That's awesome. So you stuck with it, you stuck with it for a year, competed regularly for a year before getting that first GM. Yes. yes. So you learned and you practiced your butt off. I, I know, I, I remember seeing you on the range practicing and you went to matches everywhere, which matches, I remember you talking about how matches were somewhat practice for you as well, because you get to go around every weekend and shoot. How many matches would you shoot on an average weekend or in a, over a month? period of time? I think uh, probably the first year before before my wife moved here as well, I was probably shooting six matches a month. Six a month? I would say so. Pretty much every Saturday, Sunday, every match I could find in the area. So one to two matches a weekend? Oh, yes. Gotcha. Yes, gotcha. for sure. So that's a lot. That's a lot of time and that's a lot of ammo and a lot of driving. It was. Plus all the weekday matches. The bowling pin matches were on, yes. on Wednesdays. Bowling pins. Wednesdays or Thursdays. And rack matches and on Friday nights. Matches at Friday, so. And then training yeah. in between. Yeah. So you were putting down a lot of rounds, a lot of trigger time, and then all the draw strokes and and, and training, dry fire training at home. For lots, sure. lots of dry fire training at home. So this isn't something that, like Daniel is not just naturally amazing. He is... Uh, dedicated and driven to practice and train more than the average bear cool. you know so he didn't just walk into this and and just earn it J just because he's amazing he walked into this and he earned it worked for it through lots of repetitions lots of uh, motor muscle major muscle memory lot of, lots of fine motor skills lots of of fine-tuning here and there, lots of studying, 
studying other shooters, uh, studying the, the champions. How does this champion do it? And what can I take from his technique and apply to myself? Watching videos, uh, interviews, you know, get, listening to those guys talk, reading, reading articles, and just, he became a, a, a hardcore student of this, and it took him a year of that to achieve the first Grandmaster ranking in RFRO, which for all intents and purposes is, is probably the best place to start. Right? I think so, yes. You know, from a, I think so. From a user interface uh, standpoint. Um, so, it's a completely different technique than the pistols, the rifles. Yeah. But RFRO, RFPO, I would say that's that's the best entry point yes. for, for Steel stu Challenge for sure. And while we're on that, I also want to note that Daniel, after achieving Grandmaster in several other divisions, went back and updated his RFRO and RFI, RI classifications and a couple others. I think the rim, the rimfire classes. Yeah. Um, because he had achieved them two plus years ago, and they adjusted the par times down. Um, so he has a ninety-five plus percent grandmaster ranking right now, currently yeah. in Steel Challenge, um, which is amazing. And uh, the hat's off to you. If I was wearing a hat, I would take it off to you. Let's yeah, see what happens so. next year. You know, they bump it up every year. So yeah, they make it harder and harder because you guys are pushing the envelope, and you're and you're you're getting faster and faster and faster. Um, also, mind you, Daniel has a full time job. More importantly, he's married, and he's got a son who's a year and a half. A year and a half. Yeah. Year and a half old, and he does this all on. His time and mostly his dime. I mean, he's got sponsors that will provide discounts and what have you. But he's not a paid professional shooter. And he accomplished what paid professional shooters have yet to accomplish yes. by gaining a Grandmaster ranking in all 13 gun divisions. Uh, and there's a lot of risk that comes with that, too. There's a lot of... There's a lot of... Uh, discomfort that comes with that you know uh, a lot of your paid professional shooters shoot their open gun and shoot other uh, you know 2011 style guns with short <coughs> triggers and short resets Daniel branched out got really good at those triggers and then branched out and shot the revolver divisions with the long double action trigger pull you know and and other divisions that he's not quite as used to um, and he just tackled him. He, he find, found a found a good gun and got it and started practicing. And and I I, I, I don't want to steal your thunder or, or, or take away. I'm just describing some of what I have witnessed in watching him in this journey uh, over the past three. You years. were there when I first shot the revolver, right? We yes. I sighted it in that morning. And yes. We, Fifty rounds later, we shot a match. Yeah, and you got a. <laughs> did you get? Did you get GM that day, or, or at least I a think, couple of master? I think stages? there was a couple of master stages, and the we were laughing. First. We were laughing pretty hard because yeah, we were like, ah, no expectations. Yeah. It is what it is. Now the part times are slower, but it's a different gun platform, and it's a long trigger pull that a lot of the other shooters aren't used to. And he just grabbed it and started shooting it. You know, so so proud of you, brother. That was Amen. a fun day. That was a fun um, day. So. Uh, so, let's see, what did you, what did you get here? How did, how did your first Grandmaster ranking achievement differ from the remaining 12 Grandmaster rankings? Oh, that's, that's a tough one. I think the first one is, is pretty exciting because you see, you know, all the, always the, the top, you know, competitors at the club level, you know, you'll see a few GMs and you think, you know, maybe one day I'll get there, maybe not. Do I have what that's, it takes? That's I, me. I don't know. Uh, so it's pretty special. That's how I feel. <laughs> maybe I'll get there one day. It's, it's, I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can. I've seen you shoot. So there, it's, it's in there. It's Thank in you. there. I got to put in a lot more practice though before <laughs> I'm going to get there. But anyways, keep uh, talking. Keep talking. Uh, no, um, it's um, 
but I would say it's it's each one comes with a little different taste. Um, I would say limited was uh, an elephant off my shoulder because I think I was sitting at 94% for for almost a full season, and I kind of carried that over to the winter into the next season, and just la that last percent in limited felt like forever. So. When I got that, it was here at Protex Steel Challenge match, so that was that was a, a good day. Uh, the in last the winter, in the winter, I think it was that was at one of the winter matches. Oh, I, I think it was the beginning of the spring this year. Was it okay? Yeah, I think beginning. Well, I remember of he would come out to our winter matches because we hold matches year round. Every month we've got a match, so we'll go shoot when it's twenty oh. degrees outside. That's when I <laughs> shot the PCC in the winter, so I didn't have to draw in the cold. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, keep, keep, uh, yeah but uh, uh, I mean, each one comes with a little different taste. You know, sometimes it, the revolver, it kind of just happened one day. I just came to the range and it was a super fun match at, at Riley. And, you know, I was just putting, I think every, out of the six stage, five were personal best that day. Yeah. So everything was just clicking, just, nice. you know, that. Part of the brain that's supposed to do the shooting was doing the shooting, exactly, and not exactly. and yeah. not not Daniel. Yeah. So he got a little, he got a little uh, yeah. Ego yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we I just relaxed that day and it just worked. So that one just came as you know a really light one, like easy one. Yeah. But definitely the most emotional was the last one production. Yeah. That one was. Uh, yeah. That was an explosion of, of emotion. Well, it's an amazing day. accomplishment. You, yeah. you just touched on something that I want to I want to bring up that. Omar, we call him Omar, old man at Omar, old man at the range. Uh, he's also my dad. If you couldn't see the resemblance, uh, he's taught several of us over our lives and over our shooting careers to get to the point of where it becomes reflexive, to where your subconscious is the one running the gun, and your conscience is the one simply telling your subconscious where to put the bullet. Target selection. You know. Um, and and trusting your subconscious, subconscious, no subconscious, to do everything else, and um, your base brain that runs your body. That, that's, It'll run your body better than this brain. Yeah, and and it runs it a lot faster, and that's really the key that you alluded to uh, in that podcast with uh, what's what's their name? Still target paint. Yeah, with, with Jeff and, uh, and Steve. With Jeff and Steve. And that's the exact principle that he laid in the foundation oh, for sure. of your shooting platform. And, and that's and you what I meant it. that day. Yeah. yeah, you took it and built on that foundation. And now his body is trained subconsciously to make those exact movements on the eight steel challenge stages. So really the only difference Division to division now is the gun, the equipment itself, the trigger pull and the sighting aperture and the weight and the recoil and the way you hold it. That's really the only difference. His subconscious makes those movements no matter what those other variables produce. And that's amazing. That's and your amazing. subconscious ends up developing a, a card file that when you touch that gun, it automatically goes to that card file, reads that technique that you deal with this thing that's in your hand. Yeah. You don't have to really think about it. It just does it once it grabs it. Yes. It recognizes this, this caricature. Yeah. As long as you don't get in the way. Exactly. As long as you don't exactly. get in the way. You got to get out of the way. And that's one of the biggest things that I have in the past struggled with, with competition, is I'll turn my subconscious off because of the pressure, because I, I want to go fast, and that's when I will consciously interfere, and I'll actually shoot slower. And that's the biggest hurdle that I think a lot of us shooters, yourself included, oh yeah, for sure. go through. It's, it's not allowing the game to get us out of our game. You know? Give up control. Yeah. During the firing cycle, yes. Give up control while the bullets moving down the barrel. So, would you say that <clears throat> that would be the best tip that you could give to other shooters who wish to follow in the path that that you have been the first to cut to achieve thirteen GMs? I think that depends a lot on the shooter. Or, or, right. or what tip would you give to? What would be your your top tip to give to? 
the shooters watching here. I think the mental aspect of the game is, is huge, right? And I think that every every shooting sport has that, right? I mean, even even precision shooting and Olympic shooting, you know, the mental aspect there. There's books written uh, about the topic, and I think that's that's huge. So that's definitely worth investigating. But I also think that in the end, it's 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 finding what works for you. You know what I mean. So I think that the biggest tip is is really to look at yourself and you know what what are your actual goals and what are you trying to achieve. For me, uh, uh, shooting all thirteen divisions was competing against myself, and and all the pressure was coming from myself. There was nobody, hey, you know, you need to do this. It's quite the contrary. Yes. Um, so I think that's where, where you make the conscious decision of, you know, what, what is what I want. And I think once you define that, and then, then just just pursue your path. So I, I, I think that it's more than just, you know, a specific technique or, or uh, uh, an aspect of the game, you know. It's, it's, it's defining what you want and then breaking it down into, okay, how do I want to get there? Mm -hmm. You know, defining think, a goal. And I think we spoke a lot it. about this over the last few years. You know, yes. okay, how do we break that down, right? What's the numbers and uh, uh, yes. how many times? Okay, hey, you know, this little part of that stage is where I'm struggling with. You know, breaking that down, going after it. Yes. And uh, I think that that's that's that would be my number one tip: is is define your your goals. What is realistic for you? What do you want to achieve? and uh, then break it down into the components of, of what it is and, and eventually if the mental part of the aspect, you know, the mental aspect of the game is what's keeping you from getting there, then for sure, yeah, absolutely dive into that and, and pursue that. Yes, that's awesome. That was an amazing answer. Love yeah. it. Um, well, like, like the Bible even talks about, you know, we have to, we have to write the vision, you know, we have to define the goal, like you said, and then we've got to press towards it. And pressing towards it is composed of a lot of steps, you know. I think that's the beauty of Steel Challenge, you know, uh, or at least what, what keeps me involved. I, I carry my personal times and my average everything in my pocket. And every time I'm, I'm up to the line, I take a look at that, and, and that's the guy I'm competing against. I'm not competing... Is it wonderful to leave the match at the end of the day and, and, and you know be on the top of the list? Of course, of course it is. Yeah. Everybody yeah. loves yeah. that feeling. Yeah. It's, it's, a comp it's a competition. It's a competition. Yeah. It keeps you coming for more. Yes. But at the end of the day, uh, uh, sometimes I'll shoot a good a, a good you know stage and somebody will come up. Oh, that was fantastic. And then I'll look at my time and like, no, nope, nope, it, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. <laughs> not for me. It wasn't yeah. good. That's not what I wanted. That's not what I can shoot. So I think that's what keeps me so coming back for more yes. is that I know exactly who I'm competing against and I can push that guy. And that's uh, that's the fun part for me. Yep. I, I love I love your heart and your description of the process of making it there. Now now that you have achieved this monumental record. Name one thing that you're proud of. Whew. That I'm proud of. I think the friends along the way. Amen. I think the friends along the way. That's too. awesome, brother. Absolutely. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, I think the friends along the way, that's... Uh, yeah. And then the people who really want the best for you and, you know, people I... I hope that I've helped in some sort of way. Um, sometimes I'll get a message now and hey, you know, really helped me out a couple of years ago. And like, wow, that's, and that's that amazing. Feeling thing. Too? And, and it's awesome. And yes. sometimes I'll, I'll be honest, I'm very uncomfortable uh, um, giving any people advice because, you know, it's a competition. Sometimes you see something, like, wow, I could really help that just, just a little bit right there. But is it really welcome? You know, you don't want to sound like, a, yeah. you know, hey, I'm here to tell you what to do. That's, it's yeah. really hard not to come across as, you know... That's an art. Yeah, yeah. And, and really just... But in the end, it seems uh, uh, I've helped a couple people, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. You have helped me. Yes. And I've been shooting uh, for 33 years. <laughs> and you have helped me. I'm glad to hear that. I'm yeah. glad to hear that. Um, and you have helped. I, I have personally seen you yes. help here at Little Pro Tech. I have seen you help dozens of people, junior shooters, new shooters, and experienced shooters. I've seen you talking with the best and the mediocres all the same, you know, and sharing tips. 
especially in the latter half of your shooting career. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Mentoring Look. is a very important concept, and you've grasped it well. Thank you. Appreciate yes. that. Yes. I had I had somebody to learn from. Amen. Amen. Looking Thank back, you. looking back, name one thing you would change if you could. <sighs> if I could. Yeah. Maybe not putting too much pressure on myself would have made it easier. But then it also wouldn't have been myself. I don't know. It's difficult. Because it's kind of like it's what I think got me there. Yeah. But it's also getting it in the way. Yeah. It's kind of like a, a strength and a weakness all at the same time. Exactly. It, it drives you and it hurts at the same time. Yeah. 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 Well, when people ask about you, who's that Daniel guy that, that, get, that got first place? And I describe you as the guy who practices and trains more than any person yeah. I have ever personally witnessed. Yep. Maybe aside from paid professional shooters who shoot eight hours a day. Not all, they don't shoot eight hours a day, but they're paid to shoot. This guy practices more than anyone else yep. that I have personally met. Uh, or, or witnessed, um, and that that speaks volumes, you know. Um, it's and awesome. it's, it's also weight on the family, so it's, balancing that is also not not the easiest thing. Which leads me into my next question: Having become a father about halfway through your journey, how did you balance family time and competition time? Uh, competition time definitely was reduced by quite a bit. Uh, but I think the drive was always there. So, uh, of course, my wife supported me uh, a lot. Hey, Christian, come here, buddy. Come sit on your daddy's lap. Come here. <laughs> so, I mean, for sure, Fabiano supported me uh, uh, a lot, and 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 just being there for for Christian while I was, you know, out shooting uh, or, or competing. Uh, we also find a way to kind of balance that equation a little bit with, with other activities and, and things like that. There you go. There you go. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, on the other hand, you know, maybe he's helped me. Becoming more patient and, uh, you know, putting a little priority on what, what comes first. Go to mama. Amen. That, that, if there's anything that I have ever wanted to encourage you in, it's that right there. And to me, what you just said is the biggest blessing for me. <clears throat> for watching you go through this process. And I know we, we butted heads a lot early on in that first year when I moved up here from South Carolina and you had just joined the pro tech shooting team and we're just, just taking off, you know, at full jet speed. And that was, and you know, we, you know, we, we remember all the conversations we had, Daniel, you know, your family is the most important and, and the sportsmanship is the most important. And, and I want you, when you get there, when you get, because you're going, I told, I remember telling you, you're going to the top. You've got the drive and you're going to get there, right? When you get there, I want there to be hundreds of people that are proud of you, that, that are happy to see you there because you earned it and you encouraged others along the way and you were a good sport. And you transformed into that over this three years. You came from Brazil, entirely different culture down there, and you've described it to me and a few others have too, where it's kind of every man for himself. Whereas in America, yes, it's still, it's still a competition, but we all encourage and lift each other up. And you have combined that hardcore competitive nature from your upbringing, from your roots with sportsmanship. And now you've got an amazing platform Excels. to take forward. And I'm so incredibly 
happy for you. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. That answer, this whole interview, that's why I held this one towards the end, and I told you at the beginning, just answer from your heart. That is the answer I was really hoping we were going to give. And I'm sure Fabi, your wife over there, is, Fabi, are you proud of this man yeah, for that answer? Yeah. Did, did you hear his answer a minute ago? Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Proud of you, brother. Thank yep. you. Super proud of you. I'm going to give you a hug after the video. Um, okay. So, and we've kind of touched on this, but to other, to other family men and women competitors, male and female competitors in SCSA or any, any competitive sport, Give one piece of advice that you have learned along the way. Ooh. I think there's a there's a saying for that in the U.S. Happy happy wife, happy life. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> happy wife, happy life. So yeah, for sure, family comes first, uh, and uh, I'm 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 thankful for for having my family support me. And uh, uh, just allowing me also to pursue this. And uh, who knows what's next now. Which leads me into my next question. What are your next steps? Have you thought about it? Have you considered anything? You want to try NRL out? Uh, well, we, just, we just had the first match yesterday. It's a blast. Uh, I think I want to have some fun. Not that this wasn't fun. Yeah. But uh, for the last few months, it was a mission, and uh, I want to go back to just just have fun, just, just have enjoy. fun for a little bit, yeah. and relax. Uh, relax. I have some plans for next year. Uh, still working up some gear for that, and uh, still focused on steel challenge and, and, and USPSA. I miss shooting more USPSA. I really focused on steel because you know I couldn't do all. Yes. Um, Especially after after Christian came along, that's when I really ramped down USPSA and kind of stuck to steel. Um, so I want to maybe shoot a little more USPSA next year, but I still have some goals in steel that I want to that I want to pursue. And let's see. Yes. Time will tell. Now I want to point something out that Daniel just said there. He <clears throat> started and shot bowling pins and Friday Night Steel and and three gun and USPSA and Steel Challenge and spread himself across all of them and was a good shooter in all of them but wasn't one of the best in all of them. And instead of continuing to do all of them, he said, I centered my focus on Steel Challenge. I said, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hone this one. And now he's one of the best and has achieved Grand Master in all 13 divisions, the first in the world. And now he's gonna plan his next step. Now, uh, I skipped a question. Four or five questions back, I accidentally skipped a question. And this is for this is for all the guys. This is for all the guys out there that are all about the equipment. Okay. After having achieved Grandmaster in all thirteen divisions, Daniel, what what percentage of each achievement was attributed to equipment, and what percentage was attributed to you, the shooter? After looking back in hindsight, Ooh. I think not not to sound repetitive or something we were discussing the other day, but uh, uh, you know it's like when you're racing cars, right? Ah. The car is part of the race. The gun is part of the race. Absolutely. Um, so first, it needs to work. So I think that's you. You need to have equipment that's reliable. Otherwise. It's just frustrating at a match. You, you can't get anywhere. Yeah. Uh, shooting across all the divisions, uh, I've always tried to get my hands on the best gear I could get. Um, and uh, I think that when you're fighting for a tent or a couple of tents, it, it, it can help you get there. It makes your life easier. Can it be done without, you know, the best gear? What is the best gear? I think that depends on the shooter. Yeah, it's subjective. I, I, I started, I migrated pretty early to, to the 1911 platform in 2011s. Yeah. So I kind of try to get everything as close as possible to that. 
Um, and I think that there's a lot of technology in those guns uh, that can really help to shoot. And uh, I going to open very soon, uh, um, probably sooner than other people would go. Um, it's something that later I had to come back and polish some skills that you can maybe get away with a little bit by shooting a, a better equipment. So eventually it's going to catch up to you. But uh, I think that gear is still, it's hard to put in a percentage, like you said, you know, it kind of goes together. Yeah. You know, it kind of goes together. You can't, you can't put a, a, a beginner driver in a Formula One, he's going to wreck. But, you know, as I think both things come together and evolve as you see that the equipment is holding you back. And usually we as shooters, we tend to invest more in equipment than ourselves. I think that's well known throughout the shooting community, right? Yeah. I, I can throw money at a problem and, and, and it helps. Yes. Uh, but in the end, it's still, there's still a lot of technique out there. But if you're fighting for that extra 10, you know, or the guy's now going, you know, sub, sub 60s. I mean, you're not going to do that with just any gear. Yeah. You know, you need the best of the best. And, and, and not the best of the best is whatever works for you. Yeah, what works for right. you. Right, what works for you. Yeah. And uh, I think that's, that's where it lies. It's, it's not, the, the best is not necessarily the most expensive, but it's the best that works for you. So it's kind of tuning yourself to the equipment and the equipment to you. And uh, what really helped me across the platforms is I try to keep it as close as possible to what I like to shoot most, which is the, the 1911, 2011 platform. Yeah. That's awesome. I remember, I remember you going through that, stepping from your open gun to say production, and then having a few, a few foundational minor issues that you had to go back and polish up. Uh, and I remember seeing you go through that process, but you went through it because at the end, remember, his last two, your last two were revolver, right? Revolver and production. Revolver yeah. and production. Revolver, long trigger pull, not, it's like the, the polar opposite to a 2011 trigger pull, okay? And production, the division with the most shooters in it, right? One of the divisions with yeah. the most shooters in it. Yeah. Um, and that right there tells... The community that you have a good base now because you can take a production gun and you can take a revolver and you can get grandmaster level with it which two years ago when you were for all intents and purposes within a few percent of an open shooter as you are now there's no way you would have been able to do that with a revolver or production but now you can so that that right there says that you went back and you filled in the cracks in your foundation and made that foundation even more solid. For sure, for sure. I would venture to say that we could go, go down there and have a match with with everybody shooting the same gun and it could be chosen at random and you would do very well if not win the match. I, I, I believe you would win the match with our local populace, you know, because you put in that time and you've got the motor, you've got the muscle memory for the stages and you've got the foundation to pick up a gun and run it well. And that, that is a sign of a very good shooter. So, my closing remarks are to you viewers, mainly to you gun companies who sponsor shooters. This man has already done all the work. He's put in the time. He has, he has ran the race. Mostly on his own time and on his own dime. And has has the amazing base that you guys pay a lot to send your shooters out to professional training to get. Uh, so now it's just a matter of who's gonna who's gonna reach out and grab this guy first. Exactly. So um, I can tell you this: if I was Glock or Sig or or any of these big competitive brand, Smith & Wesson, I would be beating this guy's door down, saying, hey, we want you. You've got it. You've got what we're looking for. You're, you've, got the, you've got the talent, and you've got the sportsmanship. And you've done it in how much time? 
three years? Oh my gosh, that's awesome. So hear this interview and reach out to Daniel. We're gonna put his, can we put your contact info in sure, the, in the sure. we're gonna put his contact info in the description of the video and reach out to him, okay? And uh, also we wanna give thanks to all of his sponsors. We've got Wabash Valley Armory, which he mentioned. Sure. Uh, of course, ProTech, we've got SNR Shooting Supplies. We've got Rafferty, Pat Rafferty. Uh, builds amazing custom guns. So he only builds what, a dozen or so a year. Probably, uh, yeah. uh, some of the best 2011 platforms, 1911 yeah. platforms on the market. Um, what other sponsors do you have on your that, shirt? That would be it. I just recently joined uh, Team Match Tracker. Match Tracker. So big out shout out to Vance for, for yes. bringing me into that family as well. I'm excited to be there. Yes. And uh, yeah, looking forward to That's awesome. Continue on the journey with you guys. It's awesome. Well, and I'm thankful because a lot of shooters, as they grow, the forget where they came from. I'm thankful that we haven't forgot our little company, you know, and the fact that Omar took you under his wing for sure. three years ago and and opened up his gun safe and pulled out some of the guns he's had for 35 years or longer. I said, here, try this one. Now try that one. Now and try we shot them all, didn't we? We did. <laughs> yeah. We shot them all. Did you, you have him shoot the 44 mag? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah we know. shot everything. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for not forgetting us. No, and I appreciate you guys always being there. I'm sure you're going to be. Thank you. Yeah. That means a lot. That means a lot. That we weren't just a stepping stone. You know that we're that we are part of the journey, and it's nice because see we can always say Daniel started with us. his shooting career right here at Little Protect. Yeah. You know, now he's taken it way beyond, way beyond us. Yeah. You know, but what an honor, what an honor to have met you and to have been a little part of your journey. I was also very lucky to start where I did, so I'm, I'm glad. We love you. Thank you guys. We love you much. Closing remarks. You've you've done a good job. You've said everything needed to be said. Other than we do love you dearly and we're very proud of you. And that's an amazing accomplishment. A lot of work on your part. Yes, the equipment is important, but it's not important as the operator. That's still the key. How good that operator functions. An operator functions well by operating a lot, practicing a lot, developing all those motor skills. For sure. Sure. You taught right. yourself well. You learned well. But you helped others well. Thank, Thank you, Doc. Hats off to you, brother. Awesome. So incredible. No, I'm proud excited of you. to be here, and uh, yeah, let's hope I'm around for for a long time on Team Protect too. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna keep you. Yeah, we're gonna keep you. <laughs> so, we don't we don't let go of people very easily, you know. And I'm so incredibly proud of you for for sticking this out and for the growth. Like I say, even more so than the 13 GMs, the, the character growth and the sportsmanship that you have developed coming from Brazil to America is outstanding. Outstanding. I appreciate you know, that. Thank you. I look forward to shooting with you and so do many other shooters now. And it's amazing because you share and, and you 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 push everybody. You put. I mean, when you're on the line and everybody's watching you, when I shoot with you, I shoot faster. I shoot better because <clears throat> you're setting the bar here. If I'm shooting with a lesser shooter, he's setting the bar there. Well, then I only feel like I need to go, you know, as good or maybe a little less than him. But if you set the bar up here, it's going to push every other shooter. And you're and you're nice about it. Yeah. You're respectful about it. But well, we got to take it to Rose then to see where the bar really is. There we go. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's how I feel when I'm there. <laughs> so, guys, I hope you've enjoyed. We hope you have enjoyed this interview of Daniel. And uh, feel free to leave comments and reach out to him and send him emails. How about we just put your email on there instead of your personal phone number? Of course. How about we're going to put his email on there? That too. Email and social on media. Look him up on social media on yes. Facebook and Instagram. Yep. And it's Daniel Matthias. Yep. D a n i e l m a t t h I A S M A T H I N S. Uh, I will put it in the comments. M A T H I A S. You have I -A -S. No, one T, not two. Um, so, 
Yeah, we're going to put all of his contact info in there. And uh, if you got something positive to say to him, even if you want to send him an email and say, hey, man, we're proud of you. Or, or leave it in the comments of this video. I'm sure he'll be watching the comments, too. For sure. Um, but give him a shout out. This man deserves a pat on the back. He deserves applause. He put in the time and he, and he made it. So, Thank you, guys. You're my hero, brother. Uh, you're you. all mine. Absolutely, brother. Love you, man. Yeah. Guys, stay safe out there. And we'll see you next time. Good job. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, first one. Gotta get that other one. <coughs> oh. Oh. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. No one group hugs. Yeah, no group hugs. Thanks, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is amazing, Danny. It truly is.